What's up everyone? Today I want to switch gears and discuss a game that has had me fascinated ever since it released over 5 years ago, and that game is Silent Hills PT. Even though it was just a demo and unfortunately got cancelled, I still seem to think about it often and can't help but be fascinated at the potential mysteries within it that are still left unanswered. Due to this fascination, I have decided to try my best to microanalyze every detail of PT and try to uncover what exactly was going on and what might have been in store from this masterpiece of a game. My plan is to start a series where I inspect certain mysteries within the game and see what I can find. Some of these mysteries being Norman Reedus' character, the talking bag, the fetus, and today's topic, which is, how did Lisa die? So let's begin. I think the best place to start is with Lisa's character model. We can learn a lot from just looking at her. From top to bottom, we can see she has one missing eye, while the other is nearly bulging out and there are vomit stains around her mouth. Her attire is interesting because it appears, to me, to be an old-timey nightgown. I considered it being a Sunday dress, based on the radio broadcast, but from my limited research, Sunday dresses tend to be more colorful and shorter-sleeved. On her nightgown, she also has a ton of blood below her waist. Then the most interesting part of her attire is the single red high heel she is wearing. As for what these all mean, I'll get to that in a minute. Let's next listen to the opening radio broadcast, which describes some of the murder details. took place while the family was gathered at home on a Sunday afternoon. The day of the crime, the father went to the trunk of his car, retrieved the rifle, and shot his wife as she was cleaning up the kitchen after lunch. When his 10-year-old son came to investigate the commotion, the father shot him too. His six-year-old daughter had the good sense to hide in the bathroom, but reports suggest he lured her out by telling her it was just a game. The girl was found shot once in the chest from point-blank range. The mother, who he shot in the stomach, was pregnant at the time. Police arriving on scene after neighbors called 9-11 found the father in his car listening to the radio. Several days before the murders, neighbors say they heard the father repeating a sequence of numbers in a loud voice. They said it was like he was chanting some strange spell. There was another family shot to death in the same state last month, and in December last year, a man used a rifle and meat cleaver to murder his entire family. In each case, the perpetrators were fathers. State police say this string of domestic homicides appears unrelated, though it could be part of a larger trend such as employment, child care, and other social issues facing the average family. So at first, I took it to mean that this detailed murder is in reference to Lisa, but after examining the game more, I'm starting to think that this is not the murder that involved Lisa. Instead, I think Lisa's murder is a separate murder not described in the broadcast, possibly one using only a blade of some kind. I think this for a few reasons. To start, we later hear the audio of a murder in a bathroom, and you can clearly hear some sort of blade being used. The three murders that were mentioned in the broadcast all involved a rifle. By the way, I'm going to refer to the first detailed murder as the rifle murder from here on out. But another reason I don't think the rifle murder describes Lisa is because of the mention of an additional son and daughter. Throughout the demo, we never see any reference to kids besides the fetus in the sink. After examining the hallway, there are plenty of photos on the counters, however, they only show the father and his wife. In this photo, it does appear that the wife is pregnant, but there are no other children. By the door, we can see a coat hanger that has only two adult coats as well. The closest thing I could find relating to another child was this pink stuffed animal. Although this could be for the mother or the unborn child, it's tough to say. There is another reason why I think Lisa was murdered by a blade, and it's due to a recent finding from YouTuber Lance McDonald, who was able to find this image while messing with the game's code. It clearly shows a decapitated Lisa in the bathtub, and it presumably takes place around the time you get the flashlight, which would have been absolutely horrifying to be locked in there with that and the fetus. But for whatever reason, the developers chose not to keep this in the final game. Since it wasn't officially used in the game, it's tough to determine whether or not to use it for theory crafting, since it might have been a ditched idea that wouldn't have been canon. But we'll keep it under consideration for the purposes of this video. During the audio of the murder in the bathroom, it's tough to tell if we are hearing a decapitation. 
When we hear the blade strike, we next hear the victim gasp for breath for a while, when instead, I would expect the victim to be choking on blood. But this very well could be the moment of a decapitation, since I could just be overanalyzing the audio. As far as the heavy bloodstains below her waist, I think this is mostly representative of her loss of the baby. There aren't any noticeable blade wounds on her, and although the rifle murder broadcast clearly states that the mother had been shot in the stomach, I still don't think this is about Lisa, because the bloodstains seem heaviest near her womb, which seems too low for the gunshot the way it was described, and it would miss the baby. A theory along with this is that the father attempted to abort the child himself, intentionally causing a miscarriage for Lisa. Why would he want to do that? We'll get more into that in a later video, but for now, the fathers were all hearing voices. In a cut audio clip, we can hear one of the voices specifically mentioned sending his boy to heaven. Okay, listen up, and don't you move. Need to take a piss? Hold it. The show's got just 60 seconds to go, but I got a message for all you folks out there in Radio Land. So sit tight and bend an ear. Now's the time for action. Our society is rotten to the core. I'm talking to all the fine, upstanding folks got their welfare cut, got their jobs pulled out from under them. Yeah, you. You know what to do. Now's the time. Do it. Your son. Send him on his way to heaven. By your own hand. It's not too late if you act fast. You, what did you do? Right in front of everyone. I'm putting this on the news, you psycho murderer. And if the fetus is intended to be a boy in the game, which is what I believe to be the developer's intentions, this could correlate. Also, in prior Silent Hill games, fetuses have been very important, especially in Silent Hill 3, where Heather is meant to carry a particular fetus inside of her so that it will grow into a demon god. So it's possible that this game might have touched on that lore slightly. Again, we'll discuss the fetus itself in a more detailed, separate video as well. As far as the murder itself, it's really tough to determine how it went down, but after listening to it more times than I would like, it sounds like the father is walking towards the bathroom while sharpening a blade. We then hear the victim land on the ground with a splash. The victim then crawls away towards the back of the bathroom. We can then hear sobbing and the blade strikes. The woman screams and is then stabbed somewhere, causing her to cough and then collapse onto the floor. The tricky part for me is to figure out what the attacker slashes first, causing her to scream. Because it sounds like after that first slash, something falls to the floor, and then she screams before being attacked herself. Based on the cut clip we recently listened to, my assumption is that the father is trying to abort the child to get his hands on it. It's possible that he knocked Lisa out and attempted to remove the fetus in the bathtub, and might have even succeeded. He then leaves to get a sharp blade, but in the meantime, Lisa awakens and crawls out of the bathtub and starts to stand up. The first slash could be the father cutting the umbilical cord, and that's what we hear hitting the ground. Other than that, I don't have any other theories as to what he slashes first. But take another listen and let me know what you think. Okay, let's move on for now. When we are locked in the bathroom during the demo, the footsteps we hear are reminiscent of this murder audio, except this time it sounds like Lisa's footsteps, judging by the peg leg type sound she makes when she walks due to her one heel. <laughs> you 
You can clearly hear this on display whenever she latches onto you during the game. I think having her attempt to enter the bathroom is symbolic of the tables turning and her hunting us now. The bathroom definitely has a lot of backstory importance for a couple reasons. For instance, the fetus in the sink, we see the bathroom through the peephole to listen to the murder, the decapitated Lisa in the bathtub, and there is blood everywhere. This also leads me to believe that the bathroom played an integral part in the crime and that the murder most likely occurred here. The next big question I have around Lisa is why are there always roaches by her? Roaches are in some way associated with Lisa because every time we see roaches, Lisa is somewhere nearby. Here are some examples. So first off, it makes sense for there to be a ton of roaches in the house because it is an absolute mess with things like bananas and chocolate all over the house. But why would they be so attracted to Lisa? And unfortunately, I have to get pretty speculative here, but I would suggest that this means that Lisa could be buried somewhere. If this is a separate murder, and not the one we hear detailed in the beginning, then we don't know much about what the police found, if anything, or more specifically, if they found a body. It's possible that Lisa was buried and either never found, or potentially found later. In real life, roaches can be found in the dirt, and could be symbolic of Lisa's experience underground, so this could be a possibility. Along with this, the opening image of PT is of this foresty area, which could be the burial site. But overall, this part of her backstory is very unclear, and I feel like I'm reaching here, so I'll leave that alone for now. So let's go back to Lisa's character model. If you've played through PT, you no doubt remember Gouge It Out, clearly referencing Lisa's missing eye. Not only does the word gouge speak to the aggressiveness of how she lost her eye, but we can also see her husband in the photo giving a thumbs up, which I take to be symbolic of him using his thumb to remove her eye. Especially when you take into consideration the fact that when you look at this photo early in the game, his thumb isn't in the photo. It only appears when you get to the gouge it out section. Creepy, right? Moving on though, the eye that is bulging could have occurred from a separate head wound, although there isn't reference to it that I was able to find. The eye bulging could be due to a few different factors. For example, a heavy impact on her head, or someone squeezing her head, or even from an intense strangulation. It's tough to pinpoint one of these in particular, and there isn't much evidence provided in the game, but I think the way Lisa kills us in the game is probably reminiscent of how she was attacked. Again, it's not clear what exactly is happening, but it seems like she lifts us high and either squeezes our head or strangles us and snaps our neck, all of which could be a callback to her attack. Another aspect of Lisa's appearance are the vomit stains around her mouth, which I don't think are referenced at all either, but it would be a pretty reasonable response to an experience this horrific. The attack itself being so horrific could cause her to vomit, or it could potentially be a response to a big head wound like a concussion. The nightgown and the red heel still puzzle me though, because they seem to be in contrast to each other. I would take the red heel to be symbolic of something sexy, but the plain white nightgown doesn't fit that. It sounds like I'm criticizing Lisa's fashion choices, but I think there's more to it. Bear with me, but I've got a couple hypothetical scenarios for why this is. My first theory is that Lisa was wearing two heels before the attack and used one as a weapon during the attack, or it fell off as she was being dragged away. However, I can't think of a good reason why she would be wearing heels with that nightgown, besides maybe that it was nighttime, and since Lisa was pregnant, she wore something comfortable, the nightgown, but still wanted to set the mood for her husband, who possibly had some sort of foot or heel fetish. 
Sex during a pregnancy is common and is said to be beneficial, so this wouldn't be too out of the ordinary. This sexual backstory could be a possible reading of why the roaches are mating in the beginning of the demo as well. But anyway, the night clearly didn't turn out how she had planned, and she removed one heel during the scuffle. The other theory I have, and probably a more plausible one, is that the father still had some kind of heel fetish, but is also a necrophiliac and placed it on her after she had died. This would explain the contrasting fashion choices, and also explain why her nightgown is so dirty, but her red heel is so clean. I know this is all kind of a stretch, but we are talking about Kojima, and Silent Hill has been known to not shy away from sexual deviancies or fantasies. The last part of Lisa's look I want to mention is this creepy-ass smile she always has, and I think this just goes back to her enjoying how the tables have turned, and how she is now the hunter. Regarding the pregnancy, it's possible that the baby's father isn't the man in the pictures, which could give an insight into some motive, but again, we'll talk about motive when we get to the father. But while you're in the bathroom and the deep voice fetus talks to you, the fetus mentions that Lisa had to get a part-time job at a grocery store 10 months ago, and that the manager liked how she looked in a skirt. You got fired, so you drowned your sorrows in booze. She had to get a part-time job working in a grocery store cash register. Only reason she could earn a wage at all is the manager liked how she looked in a skirt. You remember, right? Exactly ten months back. This has led some to believe that Lisa had an affair. It is a possibility, but not one we can really confirm, but I think it is interesting that this was brought up, since it is a potential clue to her backstory. So I know I just went through a lot and had multiple theories, so now I'm going to try to do my best to summarize how I personally think the whole murder went down. To start, Lisa was pregnant and in the house, dressed for bed in her nightgown. It's nighttime and raining. The father attacks barehanded, and a struggle ensues. During the struggle, the father gouges her eye, while either trying to strangle her, squeeze her head, or hit her over the head, which causes an eye to bulge, also causing her to vomit. Lisa passes out. The father then places Lisa in the bathtub, where he intends to abort the fetus. The father is successful, but the fetus is still connected via umbilical cord. The father leaves to retrieve a blade. He comes back, walking down the hallway while sharpening the blade. Lisa wakes up, crawls out of the bathtub, and falls on the ground gasping for air. She sees the father and crawls away to the end of the bathroom to make some distance. She begins sobbing while standing. The husband strikes the umbilical cord with the blade, causing her to scream. He then attacks her with the blade, causing her to gasp for air, and then collapse onto the floor dead. From here, the father places her back in the bathtub, which could resemble this image of her decapitated in a literal bloodbath, compared to how shallow and clear the water was earlier. After this, I'm going with the theory that he places a red heel on her foot for his own arousal, then disposes her in this wooded area, possibly becoming a necrophiliac in the process. Again, this could go along with the mating roaches. But that's what I've been able to determine from the limited clues within the game. And honestly, we still have a long way to go to scratch the surface of what PT is all about. As I mentioned before, I want to explore many other aspects of PT and try to put as many pieces together as possible, or at least get a better understanding of it. I think this is a good starting point, but there are still a lot of questions left unanswered, and many of you probably have differing theories from mine. In any case, you are more than welcome to give your thoughts in the comments below, and maybe we can all come up with a solid theory together, or uncover aspects that I hadn't considered. If that does occur, I'll probably make a part 2 of this video as an update for any new theories or evidence that we stumble upon. Unfortunately, I don't think all the pieces will fall together nicely. Since this is a demo, we don't know how different it would have ended up being compared to the full-length game. I know a fair amount of people think this is just a concept demo, and that it would have played no role in the main game, but I disagree. I think these types of demos are still featured within the main game, although certain aspects are changed or omitted. The Resident Evil 7 demo was a similar example, where we saw the house itself, the videotape, and some story beats in the game, but also a few changes, like the haunting of the ghost girl and some in-game clues. I think there was a clear backstory for PT that was written out, because there are so many fine details, but I definitely believe that not everything would have made it into the main game. Some clues are very meta or aimed at leading the player into getting the secret trailer at the end. Admittedly, some of the difficulty is differentiating between what are legitimate backstory clues and what are solely used for the purpose of the demo. 
In fact, I think we'll discuss more of the overarching story when we get to Norman Reedus' character. But that will be one of my many future videos I have planned. If you have any feedback about today's topic, please let me know in the comments below. I'm interested to know if you liked the video and how you feel about the theories and what your personal theories are as well. Ultimately, I think we can uncover more by working together. But anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.